Stay all day. Stay all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go getter energy that moves anyone out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together in one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy. I wrote a book on the subject and you are listening to the Masterclass Daily Show that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is self-interest, driver of all human actions. I told you I was going to do a Masterclass on this topic of self-interest. This is something that, again, when it comes to the subjects of, of disagreement, when you are not seeing eye to eye with another person, if someone has a perspective or an opinion that you don't quite understand, or maybe you do understand it, but you think it's just completely ridiculous, and you don't understand, you don't understand how a person could even come to that conclusion, given the same information that you have been given, or someone takes some action that you don't, you can't see why they would take that action, or you don't, you don't see, you couldn't see yourself doing what they're doing. You couldn't see yourself taking the same, uh, making the same choices that another person has made and we're looking at a person and we can see something that they do as selfish, contradictory, hypocritical, or just straight up wrong. You just think a person is just wrong. You have your opinion, you have your belief, you are who you are, but I still believe you're just, as a person, in your actions and your beliefs and your choices, you are just a wrong individual. You ever, you know anybody that you could point out right now, do you think they're just wrong in the way they conduct themselves, given their position, given their age, their title, their whatever, they're just wrong? And when we see someone doing this, when we see someone doing something that we just don't agree with and we don't jive with it and we would never find ourselves doing what they're doing, we usually cry out bloody murder and curse that person's name for doing what they're doing. And we, we, uh, we label shame on that person, right? We're chanting shame at them. Like any of you who saw Game of Thrones knows what I'm talking about when they made uh, Cersei Lannister take the walk of shame. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, you say you think or maybe you even say shame on you to whatever person who you believe just for whatever reason is taking some action that you your mind can't even wrap itself around what that person is doing and why and how they're doing it but today i'm going to resolve all of that okay i'm going to resolve that problem for you because that energy that you would even put out towards another person is is affecting you in some way even if you think that is not so i'm going to help you i'm going to save you from that i'm going to save you a lot of time most valuable resource you have and i'm going to save you a ton of energy and now you can use those on things that are more fruitful and more positive for your life because i'm going to help you to emotionally not just logically but emotionally understand what everyone on this planet including you is ultimately driven by so let's get right into it point number one the topic here today is self-interest driver of all human actions understand and remember that people will always do what's best for them this includes you. Human beings, we all do what's best for ourselves. The game of life, when it comes to dealing with other humans, is about you understanding this, that people do what's best for them, and bending your actions, your conversations, any interaction you have with other people to frame this understanding. It's not that you had to explain this to another person. It means your interactions with another person need to be through the understanding that moving that person to do something, getting that person to agree with you or get out of your way or do something for you or do nothing, whatever it is that you want to get out of another person, you need to be thinking about, all right, how can I serve this person's self-interest while at the same time serving my own? Now that's, this, cause, this will require some strategic thinking on your part, not tactical thinking. See, tactical thinking is just doing things to help yourself. Strategic thinking is when you take one action, but you can get multiple results out of it. See, a tactic is one action, one result. One action, one result. One action, one result. The problem with that is eventually you will run out of time and energy and talent to do one to, this one-to-one -one type of job. If you wanna start multiplying your actions, you wanna multiply the results of your actions, you gotta start thinking strategically. We just did an episode on strategy uh, not even a week ago, just a couple days ago, we were talking about strategic thinking and how to put together strategy. And there are so many people out here who do not know how to put together strategy. This was just, what, four or five days ago, how to strategize properly. Masterclass number 1526, 
Strategy is when you take one action, but you're able to get two, three, four, 20 results out of just one action. Now, if you wanna start doing that when it comes to dealing with other people who have talents and time and energy that you just do not have access to, you gotta keep in mind that everybody is driven by self-interest and doing what is best for them. Remember that at our core level, as the, the animal lizard brain beings that we are as humans, self-preservation is each one of ours number one priority because if we don't preserve ourselves, nothing else matters. So it only makes sense that on a, an animal level, and we all are animals at our core, that we put ourselves first because we have to prioritize ourselves. We have to preserve ourselves. And even when we're in a good space so where maybe we don't have to focus so much on ourselves because we got things taken care of pretty well, we don't know unconsciously, we don't know when we may need some help again, when we may not be in a good space again. So unconsciously or consciously, we will stack up our resources for that proverbial rainy day, meaning somebody could have plenty of money and be in pretty good space financially, but they may still do things that seem a little bit selfish or just uh, self-centered when it comes to money, even though they already have money because they may unconsciously understand, they may unconsciously be driven by the fact that, you know what? Hey, I might not have I might not have this money next year. Or something may, may happen. I may lose some of this money. Let me put a little bit more of it away. I mean not let me go grab another dollar for myself. Just because they want to do that to serve themselves for whatever reason. And people have different reasons for this. Some people, it could be the rainy day. Some people they just want to make themselves look good. Some people want to make themselves feel good. Some people want to get a lot so they can help other people, so they can look good helping other people. See, everything that a person does on some level, if you are able to dig deep enough mentally and this is you, this is your level of maturity, how deeply mentally can you dig into what another person does to find the self-interest behind it? Everything that human beings do is driven by self-interest. Even when you think someone is the most selfless, caring about other people, putting themselves last, so to speak, type of individual, I guarantee you there's some self-interest behind that. Now, what you need to understand and what you, hopefully you can train yourself to understand this because this is a, this is a challenge to not a challenge, but this is a revealer of your maturity as a human being. Understanding that other people's self-interests are not the same as yours. So what drives one person to take a certain action? When you see someone else do that same action that you did, their reason for doing it could be completely different from yours, but it serves their self-interest the same way your reason serves your self-interest. See, some people may go to the gym because they want to have big muscles and they can look good on the beach. Other people may go to the gym so they can be healthy and they don't get a heart attack like their 60 year old mother or father did and they want to live a little bit longer. So that's the reason that they're going. You're both in the gym. You're both doing the same workout, same exercises, same trainer, same classes, same days of the week, but you have completely different reasons why you're doing it. Now that's a very basic example, but I'm giving that to you so that you can start understanding or remembering or start thinking about the fact that when other people are doing things to it is is for their self-interest but do not be so self-centered yourself that you think everyone else's interests are the same as yours they are often absolutely not and they often can be completely different so keep that in mind at all times people will always do what is best for them point number two today's topic is self-interest the driver of all human actions point number two when you want a person's attention long term, you want someone's cooperation, you want to be able to depend on another person, you want someone to do something that is going to help you and you need it from them consistently or you need them to do whatever they're going to do at a very high level, you need them to be all the way bought in to what you need them to do is going to help you. Okay, let me tell you what you need to do in order to get that. All right, first thing, let me tell you what you shouldn't do. <laughs> all right, first of all, do not uh, try to give a don't try to come up with a great motivational speech to move somebody else to do something to help you all right that ain't gonna work i don't care how good of a speaker you are all right do not try to shame another person into telling them why they need to do things to help you out that may work in the short term but it will not last long term no matter what you may think and no matter how excited you may get in the moment nobody long term is going to be driven by doing something for another person unless somehow, some way, their self-interest is also served, as I just talked about in point number one. If you want a person's attention, cooperation, energy, time, money, focus, whatever, long-term, never appeal to another person's gratitude or to their kindness of heart. Hey, you should just help me out because I need it. You should help me out because nobody else has helped me before. You should help me out because that's what everybody's doing, helping each other out. Don't appeal to that if you want someone's long-term cooperation. Maybe in the short term, you can get that. If somebody comes up to me, it was a, I was sitting outside in Miami one day and this, uh, a young kid, Boy Scout, 
came up to me. He had to be about maybe 10 to 14 years old, somewhere in that range. I can't tell. And he was selling these little coupons where you pay five or ten dollars for it was like coupon book. You pay for the coupon book and it has coupons to all these stores like uh, I don't remember what it was like Wendy's, McDonald's. So kind of a bunch of shit that I would never even I would never use any of the coupons in that coupon book. But I said to the kid, listen, the way that you approached me and I like the way that you spoke to me and you spoke to me directly and you had strong eye contact and you clearly stated your sales pitch and you were willing to approach me. A lot of people don't approach me on the street. So I said, you know what, I'll buy it from you. I don't even, I told him I didn't even want the coupon book. I was like, how much does it cost? $10, all right, just give me the, give me the coupon book, I'll give you the $10, good. And he shook my hand and he walked off. So he made a sale for me because he was willing to approach me and ask me for what I want, but it was in the short term. In the short term, he was able to get something from me. Now, if he asked me for a $10 a month membership to get that coupon book every month, I probably would have said no, because long term, that wouldn't work for me. But in the short term, in the 10 seconds it took for him to give his pitch, I said, all right, I'll give you $10. I had $10 in my pocket. He asked for the $10. I liked the way he approached. I gave him the $10. Short term, that worked. Long term, those kind of things do not work. Now, in long term, you must always, always appeal to people's self-interest. Appealing to people's gratitude for them to just give you something and you're not really giving them anything back. Like that, that Boy Scout kid, he wasn't giving me anything I actually wanted but I was willing to give him the 10 bucks. Now, had he asked me again the next day and the next day or the next month, or if I ever see that same kid again, he probably will not make another sale to me, but he got his $10 off me that one time. Kindness of heart, gratitude, all right, those are what amateurs ask for when they're trying to appeal to another person. A professional, professional salespeople, and understand every one of you is a salesperson, professional salespeople know what works and what works and what will always work, what always has worked and what still works to this very day is working right now somewhere on this planet is self-interest. Personally, just from my, just, it's just my makeup as a human being, I'd rather sell you something than ask you for a donation. That's just me. Now, would I ever do any type of donation setup thing? Maybe I would, I'll never say never, but I'd rather sell something than ask for a donation. Why? Because personally, it just, in my mind, it just seems like, I can more depend on making a sale than asking for a donation. Because a donation, I'm asking you for your, your kindness of heart. I'm asking for your gratitude. And listen, there may be some people out there who have plenty of it for me, but I'd rather sell you something and know that I'm giving you way more in value than I'm asking for you in exchange for in money in exchange. Even donations can appeal to self-interest though. I'm not saying there's anything wrong for asking for a donation. There are people who run, what are they, Kickstarter, there was Indiegogo, I don't know if they still exist. There's GoFundMe, that's the, the big one that I see a lot of people doing these days. Those things work, all right? They, a lot of money gets funded. A lot of campaigns or ideas or whatever it is people are asking for get funded through these platforms. Why is that? Because you may be wondering, you may be saying, Dre, all right, I hear what you're saying, but what about Kickstarter? And people got million dollar campaigns in Kickstarter and people have GoFundMes and they're getting all this money. Well, the first thing, Kickstarter, first of all, they're asking you for money up front for a product that they're selling later on in the back end. Oftentimes it can be a product. The ones that get the most funding is usually some type of product. So you're not really, that's not really a donation. All right? You're just buying a product that doesn't exist yet. So they're getting the money first and giving you the product second, which is and before they have even created the product. So they're just uh, rejiggering the process, but that's not actually a donation. But what about something like GoFundMe, where somebody, something happened to somebody, maybe a funeral needs to be paid for, and then maybe somebody went out of business, maybe something happened to someone and you notice it, you find out about it, and you just wanna to give to another person out of kindness of your heart to help them out or help their situation. You don't actually, there's nothing tangible that you're gonna get in exchange. You don't get a t-shirt, you don't get a button, you don't get any kind of gadget or anything like that. Why do so many people give money to a GoFundMe campaign if this is the case, Dre, what you're saying that everybody's driven by self-interest, what about people who give charitably? What about them? Well, I'll tell you why people give charitably. Why do you think? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question that goes that goes above that question. How do you know that somebody gave money charitably? I mean, the highest form of giving is anonymous to anonymous. So if you know about somebody giving something charitably, how do you know about it? Because somehow, some way, somebody made sure you did know about it. Self-interest, ladies and gentlemen. Even when people are giving money charitably, if you know about it, it's because somebody, somewhere, somehow, made sure that you knew about it. They want you to know what they did. They want you to know who they gave to. They want, to know, they want you to know that they're giving. They want you to know how much they gave. 
They want you to know that there's a reason why they gave because they believe in this thing or they believe in that thing or they're against this other thing and they're supporting to get rid of that thing. Whatever it happens to be, if you know about someone's charitable donation or the fact that you know about it tell, proves the exact point that I'm making here that human beings are driven by self-interest. The greatest form of giving is anonymous to anonymous. So if you have seen it or you heard about it or there's a news story or there are cameras around or the media found out, all right, there's a reason for that. All right, and it's not an accident. Now, I'm not saying that is wrong. Listen, if you want attention for what you're doing, listen, that's your self-interest. This is the nature of human beings. All right? I'm not saying that this is wrong in any way. This is just why human beings do what they do. People who give and you know that they've given, they want to look good to the public. So the charitable giving becomes news, all right? They release it to the media. They let the media know that they're giving because they want to help a cause. Oh, that's the reason that they're giving. They want to help a cause. Well, here's the other reason that you don't even notice within the giving, the hidden, hidden reason. They want you to know that they want to help that cause. And now you know because you know about it. That's the whole point. So when people are giving to your Kickstarter or your GoFundMe campaign, usually they'll share after they give. There's usually a share button that comes up. Hey, tweet or Facebook post that you share to this campaign so other people can share it to the campaign. Now, why do people share it so often? Because they want everybody else to know, hey, I gave $5 to this campaign. Hey, I gave 50 bucks. Hey, I gave 100 bucks to this campaign. There's some people that I see on social media who will give money on randomly on social. They say, anybody who comes on my live or somebody send me a DM, I'm gonna give people some money or I'm gonna pay somebody's rent. I've seen people do this. Why do they do it? Why do they announce that? If you really wanted to give just uh, just completely selflessly, nobody would know that you gave. But if people know that you gave, or there's something that you get out of that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying this is what human beings do. All right, we all do it. So this can work for you if you are in a position yourself properly. So if any of you ever get into a position where you are asking for donations for whatever reason, you're asking for donations, position the, the ask in such a way that people who give can make themselves look good for giving to you. All right, so you are help, they are helping you, while at the same time, you are helping them help themselves. I guarantee you it'll work a lot better than if everything is completely anonymous, all right? People don't like to be as anonymous as they claim to want to be. Point number three, today's topic is self-interest, driver of all human actions. Point number three, persuasion is all about understanding people's activators. When I say activators, what I mean is the things that activate people's actions and the reasons behind those actions. If you look at every human being you come across as a selfish, lizard-brained being, reptilian-brained individual, you will get a lot better at moving people to the actions that you want them to take. Let me say that again. Look at every person you come across as a selfish, reptilian-brained individual that is focused on only themselves first and everybody else second, you will be a whole lot better at moving people to the actions that you want them to take. Start thinking you instead of I more often. When I say you, I don't mean you personally. All right, so if your name is Mike, Mike, don't think about Mike. All right, think about everybody you come across before you think about yourself. All right, start thinking you instead of I because other people do not care about I. All right, Mike, other people don't care about Mike. They care about whoever they are, Tom, Joe, Mo, and Curly. They care about themselves. Talk to people about what they get and what they want 10 times for every one time you talk about what you get and what you want because people do not give a damn. People give money just as much to look good as they do to help out, as I just explained. It's usually a combination of both. It's not that people are just trying to look good at, and just use you as a puppet. Some of them are. Many of them is some combination. It's different percentages depending on who the person is. If you're asking another person for a example, you're asking someone to sacrifice something. You're asking someone to give up something in order to help you all right, that's a tough ask. All right, you got to you got to be a hell of a salesperson to make that one work. But let me tell you how you can sweeten that offer, help people frame that sacrifice as a way that that will, that will make them look good. All right, so you find a person who has a whole lot of money and they're publicly known for having a whole lot of money and you want them to give up some of that money, it may not be as easy as you think. Just because they got a lot doesn't mean they're willing to give it up. That's how do you think they got a lot in the first place? Probably by not giving it away so easily. But here's the way that you can get them to part with some of that money is to help them frame themselves to the public as a person who is willing to sacrifice. Right? We love a story of sacrifice. Human beings, we will soak up a story of sacrifice. We will listen to and applaud a story of sacrifice 20 times before we will applaud a story of somebody just gaining for themselves. Is this true or is this not true? 
We love hearing a story of someone who just sacrificed and selflessly gave of themselves to help the greater good because we all have a part of ourselves inside of ourselves that we want to be like that as well. So if you can help another person frame their giving that's going to help you as a way to make them look good, listen, the world is your oyster. You can squeeze as much juice out of the world as you want to if you can learn to think this way. The key element of learning to think this way is you got to stop thinking about yourself so much and start thinking about other people. Let's recap today's class, which is self-interest, the driver of all human actions. If you can learn to speak to other people's self-interest, you can get everything. And yes, I mean everything, to paraphrase Zig Ziglar, everything you want in life. Sometimes we see people do things that are selfish, contradictory, hypocritical, just plain wrong, in our opinion. We think they should be shameful. We cry out bloody murder. We curse their names. I want you to understand that you do it as well and people are cursing your names too, but I want to help all y'all to stop thinking that way and understand why people do what they do, not just what they do. Point number one, people will always do what is best for them, just like you. The game is about understanding this and bending your conversation to frame it. Self-preservation is every human being's priority. This is why people do things to help themselves before they give a damn about anything you got going on. Point number two, when you want a person's long-term attention or cooperation, do not appeal to their gratitude or their kindness. That's what amateurs do. If you want to appeal to someone and get long-term cooperation, appeal to their self-interest. Why do people who make donations, how do you know about people giving donations? Because they make sure you know about it because it makes them look good. All right, so the charitable giving is made in the news. Why do Kickstarters and GoFundMes get funded? Because people will share after they have given to someone's Kickstarter or GoFundMe because it makes them look good. So if you learn how to position your ask, even if you're asking someone for something, you learn how to position it in such a way that makes them look good, they'll give you as much as you want. Point number three, persuasion is all about understanding people's activators, the things that activate other people to action and the reasons why. Look at everybody as selfish and you will be a whole lot better at moving people to the actions you want. Start thinking of you, meaning the other person, instead of I, meaning yourself a lot more often. Talk to people about what they get and what they want more than you talk about what you get and what you want because people don't really care. Usually it's a bit of both of people getting gaining for themselves and making themselves look like they are willing to help other people. So when you ask someone for a sacrifice, frame it in such a way that they can look like they have given selflessly of themselves because that will make them look good. And if you learn how to frame all your requests in life as something that other people get rather than what you get, even though there's plenty that you get, you will become the greatest salesman in the world. There's actually a book on that called The Greatest Salesman in the World by OG Mandingo. Look it up. Work on your game. Dre all day.